Last November, the state ad hoc committee on the future of racing recommended Excelsior as the firm best suited to run the franchise. But in January, when Governor Spitzer took office, he named a new committee to look into the bidding offers. In April, the bidders presented their cases to a committee led by Spitzer's special counsel, Richard Rifkin. Since these presentations were made, Governor Spitzer has floated two ideas. The first, close Aqueduct, a move that could anger many downstaters, including Queens Assemblyman Anthony Seminario. Aqueduct will make more money than all the casinos in the state of New York. I'll bet him anything he wants. You have over 8 million people in New York City, and it's easy to get to by bus, train, rail, highway. It's there. Now it's up to the governor and his people to put a package together. And governor, please, please, if you're going to do it, have one entity run it, whoever it may be. Should one entity run New York racing or two? That's the second idea that Governor Spitzer ran up the flagpole. One configuration would pair Naira with one of the for-profit models. Naira would continue to run racing and the other concern would run the VLTs. I asked Empire's Jeff Purley about that idea. Yeah, I think there's one, there's one aspect that, that I think bears a little bit of discussion, and that's the whole idea of, you know, this idea of, of, of a separate VLT and, and a separate gaming, a separate racing operation. To say that all of Naira's difficulties can be solved by simply getting VLTs running at Aqueduct is very short-sighted because we're finding that the VLT operations at other tracks are not necessarily meeting their expectations. If the VLT program does not produce the way it's expected to, and we have not fundamentally reformed the business operations on the racing side, then we're going to be right back in the same situation in a matter of a couple of years. So I don't think it's sufficient to say, oh, just give Naira the gaming and let's go forward. Charlie Hayward of Naira doesn't like the idea either. I think what we would prefer to, to partner with is somebody that would come in just on a management basis to run the tracks. and. You know, given the, the for-profit structure of the existing entities, um, I think it's highly unlikely that any of the three other bidders would be people that we would seek out. But of closing Aqueduct, Hayward says that's worth researching thoroughly. Aqueduct is an aging facility. Uh, it has very limited barn space. We only have 600 barns there. Um, so as a result, during the Aqueduct meet, we run about six months at Aqueduct. Um, Belmont's only nine miles down the road, but Belmont has 2,200 stalls. So 60% of the horses on average every day have to get on a stall, go on the Cross Island Expressway, get stuck in traffic, go through all those issues to run it, to run at a Naira racetrack. Also, there is about $9 million in duplicative infrastructure between Belmont and Aqueduct. So I think that um, you know, we, we haven't taken a formal position as to what's right or what's not right. According to the Naira president, if Aqueduct were to close, Belmont would need a second racing surface and the track would have to be winterized. A little history now for New Yorkers unfamiliar with the racing scene. Saratoga Racecourse north of Albany is the oldest of the three in New York. It was built in 1864. None of the concerns would do much upgrading at Saratoga and none have suggested VLTs. One racing enthusiast told me, quote, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's how Peter Davis feels. For the past 31 years, he's played on opening day at the track in Saratoga as a member of Reggie's Red Hot Feet Warmers, a traditional New Orleans Dixieland jazz band. When asked about the possible franchise change, he said the state should stick with Naira. I really hope that Naira is the organization that wins out because um, I'm kind of afraid of the Disneylandization of this incredible place. But not all New York tracks are created equal. Aqueduct opened in 1894 and operates within the boundaries of New York City. The meet here lasts from October through the beginning of May. The conventional wisdom in New York is that racing has two personalities. One personality is represented by Saratoga, a place for the well-heeled to see and be seen during six weeks every summer. The other personality is represented by Aqueduct, dirty and a little desperate. That unfair characterization, some say, comes from Aqueduct being the home to winter racing in a state where winters can be long, muddy, and cold.
Nope is like showbiz digs down and wins. No biz like showbiz. And then there's Belmont, home to the Belmont Stakes, which completes racing's triple crown after the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness. Belmont is located a few miles away from Aqueduct on Long Island and is considered one of the elite racetracks in the country. It is the newest track among the three, having originally opened in 1905. It is also the largest. These three racetracks are Naira's legacy. So the question most people want to know is, did Naira screw that legacy up? Charles Hayward, the president and CEO of the organization, blames much of the financial chaos on off-track betting. 12% of our revenues come for on-track, in which we get 10 cent dollars for, to run our operations versus the other 88%, which come from off-track monies, and because of the OTB structure and the simulcast, we only make $0.02 cent dollars. So what's happened is our business has grown, but our contributions to the operations are such that Naira hasn't made money, hasn't been profitable since 2001. And the then management did not take the proper steps in addressing its overhead structure and its cost, addressing the OTB situation. But Capital Play's Carlo Farrell says that's nonsense. He told New York Now 24% of Naira's attendance was lost over the last three years, and it blames those losses in part on OTBs. Well, guess what? Every other nation that successfully competes in racing around the world competes with OTBs, too. Look at France. The problem with New York racing is that Naira has mismanaged it. Through his spokesman, Charles Hayward said, his representations are so inaccurate and inappropriate that we're not going to respond. While O'Farrell may be correct that attendance is down, according to Business Week magazine, horse racing attendance is down across the country, not only in New York. On-track gambling fell from $2.9 billion in 1996 to $1.7 billion in 2006, a 40 percent plunge. There are plenty of other controversial topics surrounding racing in New York, but none brings out the competitive spirit like this one. Who owns the land the three race tracks sit on, the state or Naira? Since it's paid taxes on the land for the last 50 years, Naira claims it owns the land. The state disagrees, but Elliot Spitzer seems to have backed off his original position on the issue from September of 2006 when he was quoted in the Saratogian as saying, we own the land. I don't care what they say. They're not going to use that as leverage. They are a state entity created by the state. They're a pawn of the state. They've been told that repeatedly, and they should be tossed out on their ear if they don't understand. As governor, I would have absolutely no patience with people trying to play with a public asset. It's a public asset that should be used to generate jobs and revenues to support Saratoga and all the other regions that are dependent upon it. That's what we're going to do. But now word comes out of the governor's office that suggests Spitzer is leaning toward awarding the racing part of the franchise to Naira. When I asked the governor's office about this change in attitude, they sent me this written response. There are very serious issues related to the future ownership structure of racing in New York that still must be sorted out. Deliberations are underway and no determination has yet been made about the awarding of the franchise. According to both Andrew Goodell, an attorney for Capital Play, and Albany Law School's Bennett Liebman, the issue really isn't whether Naira owns the land. The issue is what happens to the titles of the land if they lose their franchise and their existence ends. According to Naira, the franchise ends at the end of this year, but its corporate existence doesn't end until 2012. I asked Charles Hayward about this. It's 2012, and worst case scenario for you, you don't have the franchise. So then what do you do? Well, I think you have to step back for a second. And um, we're not in this to own the land necessarily. We happen to own the land. We're a not-for-profit entity run, you know, for the best interests of racing. So our goal is to solve this issue and, and solve it quickly. Why quickly? Well, as we debate the pros and cons of different racing configurations in New York State, other states like Pennsylvania are going ahead with VLTs and expanding their horse racing purses. One concern is that those purses may soon be big enough to lure business away from New York. There is a deadline, though. All the bidders have to have their completed and updated bids to the governor's office by this coming Tuesday, August 7th. The governor will make his recommendation to the legislature by September 4th, and then it's in their hands. One final thought, Saratoga is having a phenomenal meet. Attendance is up 14%, the on-track handle rose 20%, and the total handle has increased 13% over the last year's figures for the opening week.